Honda Clarity Fuel Cell 2017 Review You can't buy the Honda Clarity Fuel Cell, but the innovative hatchback does enough to show that hydrogen models deserve a more mainstream future. What is it? It's unobtainable, that's the first thing you should know about this new hydrogen-powered Honda Clarity Fuel Cell. The company may have decided to show this car in Europe, and to run small fleets in interested markets but it won't be selling it in Europe until the next generation model arrives in five years' time. True, the car's on sale in tiny numbers in the US and Japan, for the equivalent of £40,000, but there's no such deal on this side of the pond. Why show it all? One suspects, to show the extent of Honda's fuel cell progress so far and to prevent Toyota, whose fuel cell Mariu can actually buy, from gathering all the glory. Honda has been working on this technology for 30 years, and considers itself the leader, even if it chooses not to sell cars here yet. At present, Honda's Clarity Pilot plant in Japan can only make three cars a day, and that output is fully utilized sending cars to more promising outposts of the hydrogen-fueled world, Germany, Denmark, California and, of course, oil-short Japan where hydrogen fueling stations are being built at a greater rate than our own. Besides, Honda still has to get costs down further, the Clarity would cost more than £40,000 here. What's it like? Here's the bottom line on the new Honda Clarity Fuel Cell Saloon, it is civilized, comfortable, easy to drive and desirable to anyone who likes electrically driven cars and puts a high value on smoothness quietness and an abiding feeling of plushness. The new Clarity indisputably shows the potential of the design. It's a big car, a 4.9-meter long saloon with a body made from an expensive-sounding amalgam of ultra-high tensile steel, aluminium and composite. Honda claims it as the world's most advanced fuel cell vehicle on the grounds that it has greatly reduced the size of every powertrain component, fuel cell stack power electronics and electric drive motor, so that the total assembly fits under the bonnet in a space slightly smaller than the drivetrain of one of its 3.5-liter V6 models. The Clarity has two fuel tanks, one under the rear seat, another behind it, carrying a total of 5 kilograms of hydrogen, the same as the Mirai, and Honda claims this 1,800 kilograms car has the longest driving range of any zero-emissions vehicle so far. The Clarity's interior is plush and quite spacious in front. Honda's claim is that this is the first five-seater fuel cell car, and it is, but we don't think the central rear seat passenger, who must sit astride a large tunnel, would be comfortable for long. Rear seat room for the other two is quite good, without approaching the standard of the Ford Mondeo. Boot space is okay, but the floor isn't flat and the front wall is oddly shaped because of the barrel-like hydrogen tank ahead of it. On the road, driving is very much the experience you'd associate with any well-set-up electric car, same smooth and swift departure from rest, accurate accelerator responses and strong torquey power delivery. The motor has 172 bhp and 221 pounds foot or torque, and complete absence of gear changes. As with most electric cars, there's one gear and no clutch. As you drive, there's no sound buildup from the power train, just a steady hum from the new, smaller two-stage supercharged compressor, plus a distant whine when the car is slowing as the regenerative brake system charges the battery. You can increase the feeling of deceleration by thumbing a sport button on the console, although it barely sharpens accelerator response. Handling is neat for a big car, and the ride is flat, plush and quiet and, surprisingly, the steering isn't too light. With its size and long wheelbase, the Clarity certainly isn't a car for throwing about, but it does grip nicely on corners, maintains a neutral cornering attitude even in high-speed bends and has strong, easily modulated brakes. In short, the serene driving experience will be familiar to those who know the Toyota Prius well, except that it is quieter and smoother still. You could easily imagine this powertrain in a Rolls Royce. Should I buy one? You can't, as explained. 
For the next few years Honda will use its few European cars to promote the idea of fuel cells, and to build anticipation for the day, around 2022, when a new generation Clarity fuel cell model hits the market in decent numbers. But even in this iteration, the car deserves buyers, and proves that a hydrogen Honda, at a sensible price, can't come too soon, too soon. Volkswagen Ardia 2.0 TDI 244 Motion Elegance 2017 Review Volkswagen's flagship executive comes up short on the style and verve needed to infiltrate the premium ranks. What is it? You're looking at the new face of the Volkswagen brand. Even more importantly than being a rival for added desirability executive options such as the Audi A5 Sportback and a replacement for the old Passat-based VWCC, that is what the Ardian 5-door hatchback represents. Except that VW calls this a fastback because hatchbacks are, by and large, smaller, cheaper and far more ordinary. Of course they are. Fastback executive cars are special, instantly much more appealing than a saloon with an otherwise mainstream badge might have been. Remember the Rover 800? Where the Ardian leads, at least in styling terms, much of the rest of the Volkswagen passenger car range will follow. Let's wait and see if that's necessarily good news. The Ardian's grille and headlight styling will be particularly influential, VW says. The way those horizontal grille bars run seamlessly into the headlights is intended to make the front end seem wider and more impactful, helping to give this practical five-seater the visual presence of a sports car. Those curvy rear haunches, blistered wheel arches and sharp body creases are there to achieve the same effect. Likewise the availability of an optional 20-in alloy wheel for those who want one, naturally, VW did want them for the cars it used for its press demonstration drives. It's at this point that a diplomatic reviewer would normally reserve judgment on a car's aesthetics and crack directly on with matters less subjective. I'm not going to do that because it would be to ignore what ought to be one of the chief selling points of any car in this part of the executive car market, arguably an even more important one, too, in a Volkswagen starting at something of a disadvantage on brand allure when judged against many of its peers. In the metal the Ardian is short on visual charisma and distinctiveness to my eyes, it's smart enough if a bit unimaginative and half-hearted. You can make your own mind up, of course. But having been down this road once before with the Passat CC and seen others follow its lead, I think VW should have known that it would take more than a plunging roof line and some frameless doors to make this car really stand out. The Ardian is built on the same MQB platform as the current Golf, Passat. Turan and Tigan, a sentence that says all you need to know about how flexible modern vehicle architectures have become, and how much freedom they now grant designers and engineers. This is certainly no rebodied Passat, its wheelbase is longer, its axle tracks wider, its roofline lower and its driving position quite different. The car will be available with a choice of three turbocharged petrol engines and three diesels in many global markets, as well as manual or twin-clutch gearboxes and either front or four-wheel drive. But VW's UK distributor is yet to decide how widely it'll flash out the Ardian range, and, presumably, how much the car might be allowed to cannibalize Passat sales. So, for the time being, only the top of the range 276 bhp 2.0-liter TSI petrol and 237 bhp 2.0-liter twin-turbocharged TDI are absolutely confirmed, both getting 7-speed DSG, 4-wheel drive transmissions. Prices are also still to be set, but VW sources suggest that £38,000 will be the likely starting price for the diesel we tested. What's it like? One of the ways the Ardian will justify that price, 
where the old CC certainly didn't, is the old-fashioned way, with size. This is a relatively long and wide car, it looks big enough to be approaching £40,000 worth, to put it simply. On the inside it offers a very roomy and accessible boot and more than enough leg room for a couple of larger adults to sit in the back quite comfortably, albeit, predictably, not as much headroom as a more conventional saloon might. Up front the seats of our Elegance spec test car were snug and adjustable, and the seating position lower and more enveloping than in a Passat. The Ardian store consoles rise much higher at your shoulder than its sister cars, its roofline staying lower and its glass house slimmer, leaving quite a large B pillar to pair around when you're overtaking and pulling out of oblique junctions. Onboard technology is one of the key prongs of the car's appeal, VW's thinking being that younger buyers probably care more about sophisticated safety and infotainment technology than perfect 50 hours 50 minutes weight distribution or some modern pastiche of century-old European luxury. It certainly seems a sensible philosophy, but it's debatable if it's a real selling point for this car. The Ardian gets the same optional glass-fronted 9.2 in Discover Pro infotainment system as has just been installed in the smaller Golf, and just as it did in the Golf, it seems powerful and feature-rich but much the worse on usability for the loss of VW's old volume and map zoom knobs and shortcut buttons. The car also has the Golf's active info display digital instruments, which we like, but ultimately not quite as much as we like one or two other digital instrumentation setups that this kind of cash might buy. There can be few complaints or reservations about the slickness of the Ardian's driving experience. With its mechanical refinement and the consistent obliging lightness of its controls, the car feels every inch the modern Volkswagen. That 2.0-liter diesel engine remains remote and quiet even at moderately high revs, but its considerable torque, its responsiveness and the intelligent shift behavior of the car's DSG gearbox all mean you very seldom need to venture much beyond 3,500 revolutions per minute if you don't want to. The car's ride is laudably quiet on a level surface, too, even on those optional 20-in wheels and low-profile tires. Rather than simply retune the same suspension hardware you'll find on a Passat, VW has gone shopping for new adaptive dampers and bushings for this car in the knowledge that those 20-in rims would be tricky to integrate into the driving experience without also accepting a harsher edge to the ride than Wolfsburg might otherwise like. The upshot is that the Ardian offers greater dynamic configurability than any other Volkswagen, its stamping being tunable on a sliding scale from a more compliant setting to a more resolute one when you choose individual mode on the modal controller, instead of being restricted to discrete comfort, normal and sport presets. But, while the greater control over the car's ride is welcome, what it amounts to is debatable. Like most of its range mates, the Ardian is at its most effective when cocooning you from the world outside with its generally supple ride and its isolated steering. Damper upgrade or not, there's an unmistakable thump to the car's ride when those 20 in rims hit sharper lumps and bumps, though it's tolerable. But move towards a firmer suspension preset in search of the driver engagement the car's positioning promises and you'll likely be left disappointed. The car's standard fit progressive variable rate power steering picks up marginally more weight but still feel starved of feel here, and its ride becomes more choppy and little more intimately or meaningfully connected to the surface of the road. Should I buy one? The Ardian's grip level and handling agility are both good enough to make it feel more athletic than the average executive saloon, but it doesn't inspire much greater excitement than that, and as such it's not a car we'd recommend to the keener driver. In other respects, though, this is plainly a very refined, sophisticated and surprisingly practical car with a sense of class extending well beyond what many brand-obsessed buyers will be willing to credit. Will that be enough to overhaul the perception of the Volkswagen brand as a whole, and to make sizable inroads into the popularity of cars like the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe and Audi A5 Spartback, though? Perhaps not.